We have new evidence today that Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas flat out lied to the American people when he took the podium at the White House and condemned the actions of, uh, of mounted Border Patrol agents who were accused of whipping Haitian migrants trying to illegally cross the border. He knew in writing that it wasn't a true story, but he went ahead and, and perpetuated the lie anyway. Joining us right now to discuss this and so much more of what's going wrong at the border is Brandon Judd. He's the president of the National Border Council. And Brandon, you've been a Border Patrol agent for what, over, over 20 years, right? 25 years, yes, sir. I've got to say, uh, this story, uh, it, it shocks the system when you know that the Secretary of Homeland Security knew full well. He was briefed ahead of time. Mr. Secretary, this is not true. There was no whipping. And he went out there and threw your agents under the bus anyway, in the worst possible way, comparing them to, to, to slave owners whipping black slaves. Yeah, Larry, I can't tell you how upset I am right now. When he goes out there and he conjures up, when he talks about um, images being conjured up by these photos, he had a responsibility at that point to tell the American, to give the American people all of the facts. He had a responsibility to tell them, you know, the images that they look bad, but let me tell you the full story. Nobody was struck, nobody was hit. Yes, President Biden said that they, they were strapped. I'm here to set the record straight. Nobody was strapped. He had that responsibility. The President of the United States then had a responsibility to come and tell the American people the, the, the truth. But this administration does not care about facts. They want to mislead the American people um, to go along with the narrative that they have. They knew darn good and well that all of this information wasn't going to come out until months, if not year, uh, a year later, yep. um, that, that, that all of this evidence clearly showed that they did nothing wrong. And they knew darn good and well that the media wasn't going to pick it up. The mainstream media wasn't going to pick it up. Larry, thank goodness for people like you, Fox News, um, that is going to continue on this story to tell the public what is actually going on yeah. because that's what happened but they they took a calculated risk they knew that the mainstream media once the facts came out they weren't going to fact check them they weren't going to call them on it of course not but, they because they jump on board with this narrative brandon and and they, they're part of the problem the rest of the media that's that's why we're trying to rely on the truth and get these facts out here at salem news channel and brandon i remember the president saying specifically these agents will pay a price for what they did. What are you hearing from your brothers and sisters on the border here when they've got the president and the secretary, the, the, the big boss there in Homeland Security, throwing them under the bus with these lies? Well, first off, they have paid a price. They have paid a huge price to this point. They were put on administrative duties. They weren't allowed to go out and patrol the border. Their careers were put on hold. And then they had this sham of an investigation. These investigators found, uh, administrative policy wrongdoing that just doesn't exist. There is no policies um, that exist that say that these, these individuals did anything wrong. They couldn't go after them criminally because they couldn't control that process. Biden can't control a criminal process, but he can control an administrative investigation. And that's what happened. These, these investigators, they are part of the executive branch. If they didn't find some wrongdoing, their careers would have been over. So mm. of course, they came up with some sham of policy violations. Now, I will tell you, my attorneys are defending these agents right now as we speak, and we will get them exonerated. So let's talk about Secretary Mayorkas here. This is a smoking gun. This is a smoking gun. In any other administration, this would be banner headlines. This would be leading every single news story on the Dinosaur Cable News Networks, because here you've got a cabinet level secretary of Homeland Security, by the way, kind of an important cabinet position, he knew full well that this was a bogus story and it was a lie, but he went ahead and repeated the lie anyway. What should happen here with Secretary Mayorkas? I think it goes without saying that he has lost the confidence of the Border Patrol agents at this point, yes? Absolutely, he's lost the confidence. But so, so that you're, and, and I know that your viewers and listeners are, intel, are, are, are educated, but just so that everybody understands, a, a cabinet level official answers only to the chief of staff and president of the United States. They are third um, in, in their specific organization. They have no other bosses except for the chief of staff and president of the United States. That's how high up Secretary Mayorkas is. That's why he had an absolute responsibility to disclose all of the facts 
um, as he knew them to the American people, and he didn't do that. At this point, he must step down. He has no credibility anymore. Um, if he does not step down, DHS will not be a credible organization. So he must step down. And if he doesn't step down, then people are just going to have to hold him accountable at the ballot box. So potentially he could be impeached. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, listen, I, I, I've spoken to several sitting congressmen and candidates for Congress over the last two weeks. I've asked them specifically, should the Republicans get the majority? What investigations do you want to happen? What hearings do you want to spearhead to get into what's gone on in this administration? And, and each one of them says, oh, by the way, Mayorkas, the border. We've got to look at it. But you think this rises to the level of impeachment because you can add this, Brandon Judd, to his lie. He was under oath saying the border is secure. And I think maybe you can you would suggest otherwise based on your firsthand experience. Yeah, he's perjuring himself. So so he is, in fact, um, committing high crimes and misdemeanors. Any time that you perjure yourself, uh, the American people cannot have confidence. That should be an impeachment. Uh, that that should be an impeachable of, of offense. Now, it, what's funny about this is the Senate will never convict him, and that's the problem. I believe that Secretary Marcus wants to be impeached because if he was impeached, he would be the first cabinet level member ever impeached in the history of the United States, and he would make so much money on on you know the circuit of talking, going out. And giving events, he would make so much money. I believe that that's why he's still there. I believe that he's holding on because he wants to be impeached. So he continues wow. to tell the American people lies. Wow. Um, in the meantime, there's a real problem at our border. We've discussed it a bit tonight. Uh, we will be discussing it tonight. And, 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 and it's very real. And this is a security problem. There's a reason why the Border Patrol is under the umbrella of Homeland Security. This is how you secure a nation. Uh, it, it can, uh, last we checked, we had over 2,200,000 illegal crossings just this year. Has there been any change in policy down there since these record numbers have, have come through? Is there anything that we can hang on to to suggest that maybe they're getting the border a little bit under control? No. In fact, the, the fiscal year just started this month. And in the first 12 days of this month, we're already set to break last year's record. So there are no new policies, no new programs, no new operations to help us get this situation under control. But not only that, this administration will not even define the problem. If they're not willing to define the problem, you're never going to come up with solutions. They're not willing to call it a crisis. They're not willing to, to, to tell the American people that the worst immigration, um, illegal immigration situation is existing on our border today. They're not willing to define it, so they're not going to come up with, with the solutions. L let's be honest. Let's just look at the White House. Look at the West Wing and look how many people that are in the West Wing today come from activist background. Look at DHS, DHS itself. Yeah. Look at the political appointees in DHS. They come from activist background. This is what they want. They want this chaos. They want to allow as many people as they can possibly get into the, into the United States. You know, I, I once had somebody from the from the Trump administration tell me, we only are guaranteed four years to get our policies in place. And they got great policies in place. Well, this administration feels the exact same way. They only have four years to get as many people into the United States as they possibly can. They're only guaranteed four years. Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Council, you represent the men and women who wear the uniform of the Border Patrol very well, and I really appreciate you and your passion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. More to come tonight on O'Connor Tonight.